What's up everybody? My name is Vince. Welcome to the channel. I want to tell you a little bit about an experience I had when I was younger. And it was how the piece workers, the drywall finishers, how effective and efficient they were. How they can take even subpar drywall installation jobs and make them beautiful. Today, I'm gonna to share a little unknown tip, a little something that was shared with me. We're not gonna go through a whole tutorial, you're just gonna get the secret sauce. So literally, I would watch the finishers come in after drywall was installed on a job, okay? These were a lot of times union finishers. They were unbelievably fast, or what seemed to be unbelievably fast. They would a lot of times fill up their banjo or fill up their bazooka tube. They would get to work and they would cover the walls. The stuff that they would do was amazing. I seen carpenters install drywall, okay, where the sheets overlapped like they overlap where the sheets met. I would say to the finisher, I'm like, yo, do you need them to come in and, and like fix those sheets the way they meet? They say no, I couldn't believe it. And I literally watched the finisher break off the edges of the sheets, tape them, finish them. You never knew. It was crazy what they could work with. You would think to yourself, man, they're, they're just fast. The reality was, is that before they ever smeared on, put on any joint compound, they went and prepped all their walls. And that secret number one, you gotta go in and prep and get ready. How would you do that? You, you would go through, and this is what they would do, they would go through with a six inch knife, they would run down their seams, they would quickly go through and go over their screw holes and all, right? They would run up and down. Did you hear that? You can hear a slight tick. This one might be passable, right? But it could be set a little bit deeper, okay? Everything else except for this one, and then we run through this row. You'll see one down at the bottom that's gonna be set on the, there's gonna be base over that. So it doesn't necessarily matter. But here, this one's a big offender. This literally, this is, this is way too shallow. This needs to be set. So, sometimes they would carry a small screw gun with them and just quickly, you know, set those screws. Now, they would run their knife, They know they're good to go. So, rule number one, tip number one was prep all your boards before you put in a joint compound in your pan, before you break out, you know, break out your tape. Prep your walls, make sure you're good to go. Tip number two from them was, just like any other tradesperson, professional craftsman would suggest, would be to buy a quality tool or quality tools. Okay. I know some of you are looking at these knives and you're saying, ah, they're pretty similar, right? This knife to this knife, this knife to this knife. They look pretty similar, right? They're six inch knives. And quite frankly, if you're standing in the big box right now, or you're Sherwin-Williams or wherever it is that you're, you're maybe tackling this project that you're gonna head off on, okay? I, I wouldn't even consider buying these knives. But wait a minute, I, I own these knives. Actually, they're in my box, right? But if I was you, I wouldn't even consider picking up knives like this. I would only consider picking up knives like these. These don't look bad, right? Oh, this one looks like it's stainless steel. This one's just steel. And over here, we have a stainless, and then we have maybe a non-stainless steel on these two knives, right? So they look pretty similar. There is one feature missing from these knives that's present on these knives that will save you tons of time and help you prep 
that you probably don't even know about. Yeah, I know a guy is going to be on the, the comments. He's going to say, oh, I've been spackling for 30 years. I knew all about it. It's all technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We understand. You understand. But around here, we want to share with people that don't know to help make them more productive. That's what we're talking about here. We're not talking to you, Mr. Drywall Finisher, Mr. Carpenter. We're talking to the people that aren't carpenters or drywall finishers. You're probably screaming at the camera right now, I know what it is, I know what it is for the, or the professionals, but to a lot of people that are not in the trades, they cannot see what the difference is. You know, previously we talked about prepping, making sure your, your screws, nails are set. But in reality, there could be certain instances where carpenters or, or you might have missed, right? <laughs> You might have missed. So you have this head that's sticking out. You can do one of two things. You can either remove this screw, okay? How would you remove it? Well, you're probably gonna have to carry a hammer with you, pull it out. Now, you're still, if you're gonna try to finish this, here, here's your problem. You can see on the hole next to it, this is a properly set screw. The screw hole that was properly sunk filled in nice. The hole where we had to pull that screw out, you have torn paper, it's showing through. You got, you have a real dilemma there. This is the deal. Instead of carrying, maybe carrying around a hammer, because a lot of the finishers didn't carry around a hammer with them, all they would do was use the back end of their proper six inch knife. And that's why you don't ever want to buy these cheap spackle knives. You can't hammer anything in with these. But that's what this is designed for. This is metal framing with screws, but let's just say you had some wood framing and you had nail pops. You could use the back end of this spackle knife to drive those nails in to set them deeper so you can get a proper amount of joint compound over them. What you can also do is, when you have paper tears like that, instead of smashing them, you could smash them. I, I kind of like to just come in and boom, 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 smash them. It, it works, it's quick, it's fast. You could also get your spackle knife and just get the edge, okay? Just push it in and twist. That paper is now set. Your hole's filled. Sometimes this there will be tear out of this paper and it, you're not able to cover that hole. All you do is get the back end of your knife Holes covered. Now, I'm no spackle finisher guru, okay? I'm far from the best. Um, you know, I probably, if I had to work in the city of Philadelphia as a union fi finisher, they work piecework. They get paid by how much work they do, how many boards they finish. I would probably starve to death, okay? But, I do know some tricks and tips from those that do it daily and get paid by piecework, what makes them more efficient. So, although I'm not the fastest, I do know what a good finished product should look like. And I'm just trying to share it with you. And if you like getting tips and tricks from people that make a living doing this stuff, then smash the like button. Also, if this is your first time here and you're not already, get subscribed and tap the bell because we do videos like this, helpful videos like this, all the time. With that, I want to say I appreciate every single one of you being here. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you all on the next one.
video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're going to get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy. And you're here at the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications through. What? You're not subscribed yet? Well, smash this button here. After that, watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later.